First, uh, I would like to start a little bit telling about background of the monastery. So this monastery, Tidinaruzi Monastery, was established by Yongzi Rinpoche in 1987. The main purpose of this uh, establishment of this monastery is to preserve burn tradition and also to give uh, the complete education about uh, burn uh, spiritual tradition and uh, also uh, general uh, Tibetan uh, culture. So the idea, first idea of Yonzi Rinpoche was not to accept uh, small children because uh, small children are very young and uh, it is very difficult to uh, take care and it is a big uh, responsible. Until now, we had few young children who had a special case uh, we accepted in 1990s. Some of them are, has already become geshe, they are well uh, trained. So otherwise, the rest of the people are more uh, young, uh, over 15 years old uh, of age. There were a lot of uh, requests from the uh, parents who are quite, you know, financially difficult. And uh, also they wish for their children to be trained under monastic uh, discipline. Uh, so they can, children can uh, receive uh, spiritual tradition and training uh, together with some uh, modern education. In Himalayan region, we already have this uh, struggle and problem that uh, younger generation people, either they are not much interested in traditional education or they have no access of any education. Even if they have access in education in uh, Normal school, they are, you know, they cannot speak in their mother tongue, and they cannot read, and then somehow they uh, become, uh, they forget about their uh, traditional, spiritual, and cultural values. So, which we are very much concerned about. So, therefore, we start to accept these uh, children, uh, to whom we can train. Spiritually, we have about 25 children. Uh, many, most of them come from Sikkim, India, and then some from Tolbo, uh, Himalayan region. So uh, we, at the moment, we are giving um, a class for reading and writing, mainly Tibetan, and also some Nepali. And eventually, we plan to introduce uh, uh, the English and some basic uh, modern education. And then once they become uh, old enough that they can make their own decision. Some of them choose not to remain in the monastery. Some of them uh, continuously remain in the monastery and then they uh, enter into the you know, higher level of education. So, so that is the idea. <laughs> So now um, challenge is uh, many, many, manifold, you know. So firstly, all the staffs who work in the monastery are the monks, except just uh, uh, few uh, staffs, including one secretary and one, uh, you know, uh, cook. 
So otherwise, all of them are done by the, administrate by the monks, which of course are not trained professional way. Everything is more traditionally way of organized. So therefore, the children are also taken care by mainly by the monks. So therefore, uh, there's a lot of lack of uh, you know um, becomes difficulty you know to how to take care of children. It is not easy. Uh, like uh, looking after, you know, every day, very detailed. You have to be very, very much uh, attentive. You know what? Children, if they have some problem, they cannot express. You know, they don't express. Sometimes they even feel unwell, but they don't say anything. We cannot understand. We don't know nothing wrong, except sometimes it become quite worse, you know. So these kind of things. As you see some of the children, uh, may look much younger. In fact, their real age is elder. Um, so this is mainly because so in their village, they are very, the family, you know, their condition is very, very basic. So when they were younger, honestly speaking, there was no really enough kind of nutrition. In terms of the food at the moment, they are eating with the monks. Um, same same food so for the adult it, it is fine but children they uh, require to have uh, some kind of supplementaries uh, of the foods and vitamins and some milk so something like that so uh, which is very much uh, necessary the dormitory is very very basic for the moment so we have as you see down below there's only shared house not really good house so first children classroom is that one and and second this is actually uh, our Nepalese teachers room but uh, uh, at the moment we don't have because he uh, teacher uh, he or he, he left so we have three classrooms and one uh, bathroom like uh, first one this water tank we use for uh, general monks and especially for uh, young children's monks. Actually this water is quite cold so um, but when the sunshine like uh, sunshine that during that time uh, it become warm so in the winter we wash like once a week because even we have problem water so water don't enough for everyone. So if we wash, water will be finished early, so <laughs> it's difficult. Um, until last year, we didn't have even, even enough space. Now, beginning of this year, we got more space. We have planned to build a dormitory for the children, and then also classroom and uh, some rec recreation, recreative place. A nurse and a kind of caretaker, or a one person who can take care, and also plus to who has some skill of nursing. So this is very, very much necessary currently. This is what the children will learn eventually. So this is what we can give to the children. Openness, tolerance, and to know oneself one's uh, essence of one's life and same time to openness for other community and other people because a lot of the conflict and problems comes on the basis of differences of one's beliefs differences of the one's uh, you know social backgrounds and then people wanted to stick on their own things and then not ready to open other point of view uh, otherwise if you are not able to open yourself then this is a big kind of boundary, you know, of the development of the spiritual practice. These kind of things we want to teach our children.